we yeah. have a technology that's unique. So we're really focused on how do we bring this technology to market? How do we uh, really tap into all of its capability? But we also make sure we're watching what the big companies are doing because ultimately customers always have choice. So we yeah. want to understand what are the new products they have coming out. You know, we have some great PhDs who stay really close to the technical conferences so they can see what might be coming a couple of years down the road. So we're always benchmarking ourselves against what the big established players are doing, but our unique technology really gives us a great competitive advantage. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Conversations with Leaders. Today I'm joined by Ideal Power CEO Dan Burda. Ideal Power are a specialist in power conversion using expert knowledge to specify, source and help you find the right product. Dan, it's great to have you with us today. How are you doing? Thank you, Sam. It's great to be here. Yes, uh, we were just talking before we went live about the heat, and obviously I'm based in London, and I was saying it's a hot 28 degrees, but you're you're in Texas right now, and it's uh, a little bit hotter. Just a little bit. We'll probably hit 34, 35 today. Yeah, I can't complain too much. Um, Dan, let, let, let's get going then. And for those that aren't too familiar, can you give us a breakdown of Ideal Power and what your and the company's vision is? Sure. What Ideal Power has developed is a power semiconductor device, which really enables a whole lot of applications to be more efficient, smaller, and lower cost. Our technology really applies to a lot of markets that are out there today, things like electric vehicles, renewable energy like solar, energy storage, uh, a lot of things that we need to do to invest in the grid, like you know, solid state circuit breakers. Our technology makes it more efficient and lower cost. So we're really all about helping this new wave of electrification that's going on globally actually be something that can be more efficient in terms of how we make and use energy and just lower costs, because that's always part of the challenge with new technologies. They're always higher costs when they first come out. Yeah, absolutely. Our vision really is to just be a global player and a supplier uh, to a lot of these OEMs that make these products like electric vehicles and power converters for solar and energy storage systems. As I say, it's a, it's a pretty interesting and 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 hot uh sort of industry right now isn't it did you do you see that as as a pro because you know it is that exciting industry or is it a struggle because you know all eyes are on it there's a lot of companies you know in in this area trying to be the next big thing as well it, it actually is really exciting because yeah. you know we have a technology that's uniquely our own it's very heavily patented uh, and it has the ability to bring this higher level of performance without incurring the really high cost of exotic materials, which is what is being done with a lot of other semiconductor companies. They're going to really exotic materials that while they get higher performance, there's a real cost penalty associated with it. Our technology can actually use the existing silicon infrastructure, but bring a level of performance that people didn't think was possible with silicon devices. What are Ideal Power's strategic priorities at the moment and goals for, let's just say, I don't know, the next sort of three to five years? And at the same time, how do you look to achieve those? Yeah, it's really all about getting the awareness of the technology out to the potential customer base. And even more importantly, getting designed into their next generation products, because any new semiconductor device, if you really want to take advantage of it, usually involves the company making the end product to do a redesign, to take advantage of its features. So getting through that design in process is ultimately what is going to drive the volume for us. And we're fortunate that we're working with very big companies, lots of global Fortune 500 companies, electric vehicle makers. Uh, so while their process to get through the evaluation and design in takes time, it ultimately means a lot of volume because once you're designed in, you can't switch to anything else easily without going through another multi-year process. With, with, with things that, that do take time, is it ever, you know, as a CEO, is it ever frustrating or is it a case of, you know, I'm thinking so long term anyway, it's just part of the journey? <laughs> good, good question. It is frustrating because particularly as a small company, one of the advantages that we have is the ability to move quickly. Yeah. Uh, we don't have bureaucracy. We don't have politics. We don't have the things that go with being in a big company, but yet we're working with big companies. And, and I'll give you a perfect example. We have a funded development program that we're doing with Stellantis, uh, the fourth largest automaker in the world. Um, we finished phase two of that program a few months ago, and we're ready to go into phase three 
but we're really getting through the Stellantis bureaucracy to get into phase three. So we're sitting here saying we're ready to go. And you're like, we're working it. We're working it. <laughs> so, it yeah. tests our patience once in a while. Yeah, no, I could imagine that. Um, how is Ideal Power positioning itself to capitalize on growing demand for renewable energy and storage solutions? We're really targeting the leaders in each of those market segments. So the leading providers, for example, for solar power converters, the leading providers of electric vehicles, the leaders in electric vehicle charging, the leaders in uh, supplying industrial equipment to industry and, and utility companies, so that we uh, are working closely with those leaders, we get designed into their products. And then what typically happens is others in those market segments tend to follow what the leaders are doing in terms of technology adoption. Yeah. And, and just going back to, you know, you know mentioned you're, you're a small company, but a growing company, which is obviously good. And, and how is Ideal Power manufacturing and packaging its semiconductor products in such a, let's face it, a capital intensive you know, industry? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, semiconductor manufacturing takes billions of dollars uh, to, to build facilities. But what we're doing is we're actually leveraging this huge investment that's already been made in silicon wafer fabrication and uh, power packaging that's already been built uh, by all these companies that are bringing out conventional devices. Um, a lot of them have moved to fabless models. So there are all these companies that provide those services. So we're actually, you know, we're not going to own a fab. We're not going to be a part owner in a fab. We're not going to own a packaging house. Uh, we'll leave that to the really, really big companies. We'll actually just go contract with the wafer manufacturers and the packaging companies that are already out there that have familiarity with uh, silicon power devices. Yeah. And you mentioned that of the, the bigger companies and sort of leaving things to them. As a CEO, do you look at what other companies are doing and say, look, we're going to do that. We're going to do it better. Or this is our route. This is our speciality within the industry. And we're just going to go full steam ahead. It's a little bit of both. You know, we yeah. have a technology that's unique. So we're really focused on how do we bring this technology to market? How do we uh, really tap into all of its capability? But we also make sure we're watching what the big companies are doing, because ultimately, customers always have choice. So we yeah. want to understand what are the new products they have coming out. You know, we have some great PhDs who stay really close to the technical conferences so they can see what might be coming a couple of years down the road. So we're always benchmarking ourselves against what the big established players are doing. But our unique technology really gives us a great competitive advantage. Fantastic. Um, how uh, do you see the competitive landscape in power semiconductor market evolving and what sets ideal power apart from your competitors? Yeah, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, the, the power semiconductor space, when they, when they look at conventional silicon power switches, uh, the belief is that they're kind of getting near the limit of performance. So there's been this movement to go to exotic materials like silicon carbide and gallium nitride, uh, some <laughs> working going on in diamond. Um, but, you know, those are all expensive materials. They have lots of challenges with them in terms of quality, in terms of reliability. Um, but it's kind of where they have to go to continue mm. to improve the efficiency and performance of these devices. We don't have to do that. Um, we're focused on using the existing silicon wafers that are out there with a unique architecture that really gets higher level of performance out of them. And as things like silicon carbide get to be better quality and lower cost, we can make our technology in silicon carbide. So we're just going to let the investment and all the hard work get done on the material side for these exotic materials, focus on silicon. And then five, 10 years down the road, when these you know, products, these materials are much more cost effective, we'll start looking at making uh, our technology in silicon carbide as well. When when you have like a sort of a five, 10 year horizon, how much changing has to happen to that along the way is is because you know things happen all the time don't they you go back a few yeah. years you got the pandemic you go back longer there's all these type of events that happen is is it an ever-changing sort of you know vision yeah it is i mean everybody's always working to make their products better you know yeah we for example we have a multi-year product roadmap of what we're going to work on we have a multi-year technology roadmap of what we're going to work on and we update that regularly as we as we learn new things about our own products and technology. And as we see what competitors are doing and we need to figure out, do we need to be prepared for a response for that somewhere down the road? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what other markets besides renewables and energy storage does your technology apply to at the moment? 
You know, one of the ones that we're really excited about are things like solid state circuit breakers. You know, right. we have a utility, electric utility infrastructure that was not built for where the world is going. It wasn't built on the assumption that you're going to have distributed solar on your homes and your business. It wasn't built assuming there's going to be EV charging stations, you know, by the thousands plugged into this grid. And to make that system work and not become an unreliable infrastructure, there's got to be a lot of investment. And one of the things that you really need is a solid state circuit breaker because the traditional circuit breakers, they're mechanical devices. They don't act fast enough and you, they are subject to maintenance. You know, when a, when a breaker opens, the contactors arc and it wears. If you do it with semiconductor devices, the breaker can open orders of magnitude faster and they don't have the maintenance issues. So uh, it's a great early opportunity for us. And we're finding there's a lot of really big companies that supply the industrial and utility market that are looking for a good semiconductor to use as the basis for this next generation of circuit breakers that our infrastructure is going to have to have to accommodate all this renewable energy and uh, EV charging. What what was the, um, the, sort of the, the biggest challenge about having something where you're like, we're early in this, you know, yeah. we, we, we really believe in it, but what's like the biggest challenge that comes with that? There's, there's really two. Uh, you know, one is just awareness because yeah. the engineers at these companies who are working on their own products, uh, our technology didn't exist when they were going to school. So you, you've got to be able to reach them. <laughs> you've got to be able to get them to understand the technology. You've got to get them to actually be willing to spend a little bit of time and send them some product and let them take it into the lab and, and work on it. And then you've got to get them comfortable with, all right, what's the long-term reliability of this? And and we're going to, we're really addressing this in two ways. One is, you know, we go to the technical conferences. We're now starting to get a lot of inbound from these customers as they're learning about the technology because they realize it can have a big impact on their own products. And then we're actually going to go through some third-party reliability testing where mm. our products are going to be taken through tens of thousands of cycles they're going to be subjected to the extremes of temperature, and it'll be a third-party uh, test that we have to do anyway to, yeah. to be able to supply the automobile market. But we can supply them and say, all the testing's been done. It meets all the codes and standards. So, you know, you don't have to worry about whether these things will work, you know, 5, 10, 20 years from now. That's really interesting. Really interesting. Um, I've got a, a, a random question. Um, obviously, you know, public company, do, do, and you've got these plans for the future. And mm -hmm. But would, would you... Like wake up every day and look where the share price is trading, or you like what happens today? It's irrelevant. My focus is on on the long term, or is it just a natural thing to to have a look? Um, we you can't look at it every day. It becomes a distraction. Yeah, and you really have to focus on what's the company need to do to be successful. Yeah, you know the your stock prices can move for things that have absolutely nothing yeah. to do with you. Uh, if you look at small caps, small caps have been under tremendous pressure since last August. Uh, all the money was basically going to really big AI companies and a few other you know, gigantic companies. Uh, but those things go in cycle. So as long as you focus and you execute, you get your technology right, you get your products right, you get the customer engagement, the stock price will take care of itself over time. Yeah. And, and we, we, we get so many retail investors that, um, you know, watch these webinars and listen on the podcast. And I think that's just very solid advice for their own portfolios. Don't look every day. Have yeah. patience yeah. And, and, uh, and belief in it all. Um, let, let's talk about expanding your market presence and, and customer mm -hmm. base in, in the coming years. How, how do you sort of look to do that? What's the plan? What's the roadmap? Well, part of it, we're starting to bring on distributors. Uh, we brought on a distributor called Richardson Electronics, which is a really good company in terms of their ability to reach the customers that, that we couldn't reach efficiently that need uh, semiconductor devices. We're going to be adding others as we go along that are going to have some unique geographic focus because they all have working established relationships with companies that are in the target markets that we want to work with. And then, as I mentioned before, as we capture some of these companies like Stellantis, uh, you get others in the same space that say, hey, they're a leader in this space. If they're doing it, I better look at what they're doing. So we get a lot of leverage out of the, being able to engage and ultimately get to name some of these big customers because it gives us credibility by association. Yeah, yeah, which which is obviously very important. Um, let's talk now about collaborations uh, and partnerships. Uh, what sort of role do they play within your, your strategy? And can you share any recent or, or upcoming ones? 
Yeah, they're, they're important. Um, I'll, I'll use Stellantis again as an example yeah. where they're funding us to do development work uh, specifically for our technology incorporated into an electric vehicle drivetrain. Well, that work gives us the ability to go to other automobile OEMs and the tier one suppliers to the auto industry and share with them the results of the testing. Um, because they know that the tests that are done are what the industry is looking for. They're done under the conditions the industry is looking for, and they're providing that those companies need to really assess the technology for the same application. So the customer collaborations are, are really important, partly because it's funded work, but also because we can share that information with others in the same space. And then on the, the operation side, the ability to collaborate with companies that uh, make other power semiconductor devices is really helpful because as we're thinking about where our technology is going and we're thinking about our next generation of, of the product, we work closely with them because we want to make sure that we have something that not only works, but is going to be able to be manufacturable in high volume because some things might work in small volume, but they're too difficult or too costly to do in large volume. So it's a very close collaboration between the wafer fabricators that we work with or the packaging companies that we work with so that we're actually targeting what's going to be successful at, at high volume, not just for getting you know small volumes out to customers. Yes, yeah, about finding that balance, isn't it? I, I guess. Yeah, it um, last last couple of questions, Dan, um, and another another random one for you. Um, yeah. what, what 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 do you enjoy most about being a CEO? Did you always foresee yourself being one, and was this the industry that you you were always going to go down the route of? Yeah, I mean, I didn't always see myself being one. I'm I'm an engineer by training. Um, you know, what I've always been involved in is energy in one form or another, you know, new energy technologies. Uh, what I enjoy most is I get to work with a really talented group of people, a bunch of really smart PhDs who really understand our technology. And because they understand it, they're so excited about yeah. the opportunity because as an engineer, you don't want to just do research. You want to actually design something that goes into a product that makes a difference where you can you can point out hey that that product uses something i came up with you know so uh it, it's just a, a great group of people that are really committed to our success and i just learn new things from them almost every day you know just a, just a talented group of people amazing amazing and, and, and final question and and i guess in summary really uh, how do you feel about the future uh, what excites you most about ideal power I, you know, I'm really excited that that we have a technology that's not just a little bit better, but it's a step change in performance. And we're bringing it to the market at a time when we have these big macro sort of waves behind us. The adoption of renewable energy, the adoption of electric vehicles, the need to build out an EV charging infrastructure, the need to invest in our electric utility infrastructure. And our, our technology can make all of those better um, and not just in a small way, but in a substantial way. So. It's just exciting to have a really impactful technology at the right time. Um, and we're going to do everything we can to, to make it a huge success. Well, that sounds a very uh, exciting time. And I look forward to seeing how the journey progresses. Dan, as always, thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Take care.